Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily chat. My name is Barry Selby. Oh, topic, <laughs> episode 596. This is the um, continuation of the topic yesterday. So yesterday was why men are screwed. Today is why men are screwed or not. So I'm going to give you some bonuses and stuff after that. So before I get that far in, let me introduce myself so you know who I am, what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful, and high-achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And for the last two plus years, I've been doing this daily Facebook Live talks called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And being a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine kind of inspired that. And as I said, today's episode is number 596, and we're talking about why men are screwed. Yesterday was a topic called why men are screwed, and I went into greater detail about the Gillette commercial and things have been provoked by that and everything else. I may recap some of that today because I don't have a memory of what I said exactly yesterday. <laughs> These aren't usually scripted, and I didn't have like indelible points written down about what I was going to talk about. So today I want to go a different angle, I think, and probably recap some things as well. So join me for this journey, will you? It's going to be fun. And feel free to share this out with anybody who thinks you watch this, by the way. I did share this out in a few places and got some interesting responses and getting quite a few views as well. The thing that I want to speak to is, yes, this thing called toxic masculinity, which is a term banded around, but I think don't, don't think everybody understands. Because, and I talked this about, no, I didn't talk about this yesterday. For some time now, particularly since the Me Too conversation started, there are certain people, and it's men and women, have been painting the whole of man, mankind, mankind, not people, not people, but men in general, with the same brush saying you're all toxic masculinity, and that's not accurate. I talked yesterday about how the majority of men have been trained to be a certain way, and there's some of us coming out of that, um, coming out from among them, to quote the, <laughs> to quote the Bible of all things, um, to, to stand free and stand true and to be in their hearts and to live in a different way. And I want to speak to more of that part of it for those men who have not yet discovered a way that can be perhaps better than they've done. Now, this is a challenging place. And I mentioned yesterday the journey that put me into the place where I've learned this stuff because frankly, it wasn't a path I chose and not a path I'd recommend either because it took me a lot of years to get to this point. Um, as I said, I started this first, the first opening of my awareness happened in 1984 at a, my first ever seminar that I took that changed my life and hasn't stopped changing my life since then. That's basically the better part of 35 years. I don't recommend you do it that long. I'm hoping to give you some shortcuts. That's the plan anyway. So to speak to this in a very simple way, for the longest time and for what's still happening, we live in a culture that's mostly, a culture that's mostly patriarchal. In fact, most countries and most religions and most governments are patriarchal led or pa um, led by men. And that structure has been in place for a long time, thousands of years. So there's a tendency of perspective and perception that come through that lens, just the way it is, because we've been doing this for a long time. So to attempt to stop that whole, um, I'm trying to angle to push this on the screen, to, to stop that, that um, steamroller isn't going to be easy. But I want to add my voice to those who are speaking up in a way that is conscious, additive, and constructive to the conversation to see if we can change course slowly but surely. For those of you who watched my broadcast before, or 595 up until today, which is 596 today, I've largely spoken to women about being more powerful, being more in your authority, and to have live in a more heart-centered, feminine way. This one's more, as yesterday's, is more towards, towards the men and the women who love them, or men who, women who are a bit challenged by them, or women who've got challenges with men, sort of, kind of. And this this is based on. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna put a framework in place because I want to make sure this is a container that makes sense. I'm speaking about masculine lying up to men and feminine lying up to women, even though it doesn't always do that, and even though we have both inside of ourselves. But I'm using the terminology here just to overlay just for this context. So please understand as we go through this. Unless I speak otherwise, that's the framing I'm using. So men have been trained, educated, assumed, raised in the culture that teaches them that they basically are in charge. And I said yesterday how there's some definite disparities going on where the American Psychological Association 
have ground rules and guidance about how to work with women in therapy situations and how to work with the LGBT in situations, but nothing about working with men because men are less likely to choose therapy or support or guidance from somebody else. Whereas women, minorities, LGBT people, LGB people do. And that's a, that's a shame in a way because frankly, for most men, they're living in a closed box. And that's one reason I believe why the suicide rate for men is three to five times more than it is for women. Because men don't find, have a way out except death. And in some ways it's part of the framing because the masculine, um, I'm gonna say this, the masculine uh, polarity is focused on achieving goals, end result, getting done, complete, which is what death is. So for some, in, in, a, in a weird sort of way, for a lot of men to be complete is to sign off, to get out, to complete. Not necessarily because of old age or by disease, but because they choose, in fact, well, actually, no, take that back. I know that, and you've got to go with me on this one because I, I speak in a very metaphysical, metaphorical, and sometimes spiritual way. I know from having seen this happen, there are people that choose to create illnesses in themselves that do take them out. So suicide by self-inflicted illness, yes, that happens. So that probably puts the number higher. Okay, let me come back into, <laughs> into the rational world for a moment here. Because it was like going out there going, yeah, that's true. And then, okay, back in the, in the point. So, the culture that men have been raised in doesn't usually, does not provide it an obvious path to redemption, to, redemption, interesting word, to changing, to shifting. You know, the 12-step program is probably the most overt and, and um, visible place where men can go for support. It's the only place that they can go. Usually it's because they've gone through a dark night of the soul from some sort of addiction or pattern that's put in place where they need to go get support. And I'm not using women in this conversation because I'm speaking specifically to men. Because I know ladies have way more resources. And yes, women do go to 12 step too. But I'm speaking about men in their maybe perhaps more limited um, toolbox and opportunities to seek help. And part of that is willingness. The biggest challenge that I think men face is being willing to feel vulnerable and being willing to ask for help. Most men are re almost required by their consciousness and because of the way they were raised to tough it up, you know, grow a pair of balls and stick it out, which basically what, what that's what the Gillette commercial was reminding us of and also what was talked about in uh, The Mask We Wear, a movie that came out a couple of years ago now, which I recommend reviewing, which I need to see myself just so I'm, I'm promoting it even though I haven't seen it myself. <clears throat> I will get to see it, definitely. So the master we wear is a powerful teaching and this philosophy of understanding how men have chosen to go through life in very challenging ways. I, as I said in, the, in not yesterday's talk, I was bullied in, in high school. So the 12 through 15, 16, something like that, so four, four years thereabouts, four years. And that for me was a very challenging time. It was a gift in disguise, but I didn't know it at the time. Frankly, I would not have welcomed it if I knew it was a gift at the time either. But I spoke about that yesterday, so I watched yesterday's broadcast for that because it led me, yeah, all right, I'm not gonna recap all that. So for us as human, as, as men, we tend to try and conform and fit in in, in frankly, very um, rigid, structured ways. And it doesn't give us much room for flexibility. Most men, most, I should say the most straight men because women who, men who are gay, men who are homosexual, tend to find themselves, because of the fact that they're now in a minority and, and have a different perspective in the LGBTQ conversation, LGBTQ conversation, there is a, there is a more, there's more freedom and more availability for emotional expression. But for the straight male, that's less likely. And one of the challenges for men is that we have a lot of suppressed emotional expression and fears and doubts and worries that we don't share with anybody because it's not safe the way we're wired which is why a lot of men choose to drown their sorrows or to do a snort of cocaine or something else that will give them an escape to avoid it, which is why 12-step programs come in to support that. That's the one of the paths. But for a lot of men out there, they don't choose that. They're in this continual, um, relentless pursuit of goals they cannot eventually achieve. They can keep achieving goal after goal after goal, which is the way the masculine is driven, by the way, for ladies in a relationship, you may know that about your men is then more goal, the goals that are in sequence help a man thrive and grow and fulfill. But without taking stock of the journey, and I mentioned this yesterday too, that because we're focused on goals, whereas the feminine understands and embraces the journey along the way to the goals, we tend to miss out. 
we're so focused on result and the end result, not concerned about how we got there, which makes it challenging. Because first of all, it's hard for us to repeat things sometimes because we haven't learned what we did to get there. We just go for the goal. I mean, that's just me. <laughs> Maybe it is. But the reality also is for many men out there, the understanding that we can, first of all, stop and actually take a breath before we get to the goal, that we can actually enjoy the journey and the process, that maybe getting the go to the goal wasn't even necessary are outside our framework. They're not part of our reference point, but they should be. And for many men watching, I think, and I'm speaking to myself as well, taking the time to be present in the moment, which is a male skill set, by the way, allows us to actually embrace and enjoy and actually experience what's happening around us. A lot of men don't do that. So this thing about men being screwed or not is really about choice points. It's a choice point in so many ways for us to find ways into being more whole, being more open and being more expressive in a way that's not destructive because one of the challenges for men is that the only way they can express is often through anger. But anger is a destructive tool if not used correctly because you can also do anger constructively too. That's another conversation. But for a lot of men, the reaction or the way of expressing comes through that way only. And as I remember learning from Alison Armstrong at an event a few, two years ago, three years ago, we talked about this, that for a lot of men, anger is actually tied to shame. That when we get angry, because we, what's happened for a lot of men is that there's been no way for us to express our emotional upset in a way that was, that was available. And anyway, it came out through anger. And when we get angry, especially if we hurt somebody emotionally and health, heaven forbid, physically, we become very we can become ashamed of that immediately so men generally don't have the tools to facilitate themselves or to be able to engage in a comfortable way it takes effort and when it comes to relationships that's a hell of a hard challenging area for a lot of men because they don't necessarily know how to be present to their woman and also understand the emotional makeup that she has that's something i had to learn through my own work so what i'm really trying to say here intending to say here is that we men have room to grow, that we men are salvageable, <laughs> we can be saved, and don't write us off. Because for a lot of men out there, the challenges of the world feel sometimes insurmountable. That we are so got to conquer the world, do it all ourselves, that we have no way of succeeding. And finding partnerships with people, finding support from other people, getting coaching, which I know I've talked about before about how good coaches have coaches, that for a lot of men seeking support beyond what they had when they had high school coaches in sports, getting coaches in business, coaches in love, coaches in health, coaches in other areas, it's not the most common thing. And living in LA, that's a fairly common thing, funnily enough, because this area, is, this, for some reason, this, area, this town and other places too has a more of a, a constructive focus towards that. But a lot of pe people out in other parts of the world, including places like the Midwest, are less often doing that. So my advice, my counsel, my recommendation to any men watching this is, first of all, be willing to ask for help. Find people you can trust to ask for help because a lot of men don't get it from other, be other men because they don't feel trusted. So get help, get support, and ask where you can improve from somebody you trust. That's a, that's a glimpse. There's a lot more to it than that. But if you start with that alone and you take the time to be present with yourself and be willing to own up to your own vulnerability, your own emotional expression, and your own truth, you might just save your own life. This has been a, this is, I'm still sitting with what's coming forward because there's, there's a bigger piece coming through. So, Jermaine, good to see you, sir. Thank you, you're very welcome, sir. And I, and I appreciate that you are uh, watching me on, on YouTube as well as on Facebook. Oh, by the way, this is Facebook Live first, goes onto YouTube, we'll tell you about that in a minute. So I'm glad <laughs> you're watching me both places. Glad you're not weak or vulnerable and have learned from your mom first and, and from your mom first and daddy along the way how I could mirror both sides of those spectrums in your personality. Yeah, see this, that's another part of it too, is having um, parental relationships influenced in certain ways can be a challenge as well. And it can be benefits. So in your case, Jermaine, I'm glad to hear it, that you actually got the value from both sides. I did too, but I didn't realize until later, to be honest. My dad was such, and is, he's still alive, is such a um, stoic and, and um, 
well, he's softening now because he has no choice in his 90s. But he was so stoic and so um, stuck in that rigid nine to five, go to work, bring home the bacon, take care of the family, not do any, no, no emotional expression. It, he paid a price for that. And I, I actually rebelled against that. That's, just, that's actually what put me on my path to where I am now, I know, was that rebelliousness and not wanting to follow that example. So it, I learned from it as well. Not the right way, but I learned the way I needed to. So yeah. Hi Sue, nice to see you my broadcast. So this is, um, this is part two of what I started yesterday. So if, I, if you didn't watch yesterday's broadcast, please go back and watch yesterday's, which was um, episode 595, Why Men Are Screwed. And this is 596, Why Men Are Screwed or Not. So uh, yeah, no, I appreciate it, Jermaine, thank you. So I think that I'm feeling myself like running out of content on this one. So uh, there may be a part three tomorrow, we'll see. Um, it's time to talk about this more and after the Gillette commercial. And then I saw another commercial by a watch company yesterday that a friend of mine posted that was actually showing the truth of men in a good way. And I wanna make sure I make this point here too. As much as I'm talking about how men have been challenged over the years and not living into their truth and all, all stuff about their way of being, a lot of men are waking up to the truth of who they are. A lot of men are now realizing there's more to life than just goals, orientation, get it done, screw everybody else and take care of myself only. There's a large culture waking up for men to be brothers, supporting each other, to be friends, to trust each other, to trust themselves, and to trust women, which is a huge step for a lot of men to get through that place where they can trust that, both men and women. Personally, I'm grateful for that, and I'm welcoming it more and more, and I wanna help facilitate that as it comes through as part of the way the world is changing, but I'm also aware it may not be that easy. So my intention by doing this broadcast is hopefully to inspire some people. So again, if you feel like somebody can watch this, please share it with them and yes, it is as well. Um, I wanna start a conversation about this. There are some friends of mine, male friends of mine, who lead men's retreats and men's workshops doing great work. I don't think I'm joining him in that. Maybe, maybe not, I'm not sure. My focus has always been supporting women, but I wanna at least speak to the men that women know to say there's a different way of living that could be more effective. I think that's it for today. <laughs> just for today. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do these every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, and the topics do run the gamut. So this is uh, this is episode 596, so in four days, I'll be at number 600. That's an interesting milestone. I'm sitting with what's gonna happen after that. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do them on my personal page on Facebook first, then onto YouTube, then onto my podcast. I'll give you the links so you know where to find them. On Facebook, my personal page is Barry Selby, easy to find. And if you wanna see my archives on Facebook, they're on my business page, which is facebook.com forward slash barryselby.author. Um, I said, oh, sorry, so what he says, this is important to me as a single mom of a young man. Please share it with them, I appreciate that. And I do have resources of books I know and other teachings I can recommend as well if you're looking for direct help. So thank you, Sue, and I appreciate you letting me know. Um, so archives on Facebook, you've got my business page. They also go onto my YouTube channel. Which is which is Barry Selby. And if you haven't seen, if you haven't seen, excuse me, if you haven't followed me on YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And in there, there's a playlist called Messages for the Masculine, where these live. And also on my podcast on iTunes, which is also also called Messages from the Masculine, you can subscribe to that. And then you can download the uh, audio versions of these talks. Not all of them; they're only about, as of this recording, about forty of them up there. So this is now almost six hundred. I got a lot more to go. So archives on YouTube and archives on Facebook are up to date. So I thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. And again, please share this with somebody who might be um, provoked or inspired. <laughs> Let's start a conversation. And with that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same bat channel. Take care.